Well, good evening and welcome to Thursday Night Saws. Tim Ard here with Forest Applications. And it's uh, been a couple weeks since I was able to log on. So we're home this week in between Christmas and New Year's and, and just wanted to, to get back on, see what everyone is doing. Hopefully things are, are going well in your world. Got through the frost and the and the snow and the wind and the, now uh, a little bit of springtime here in Georgia. We had we had temperatures last week down to six degrees. Had some water pipes froze and yeah, it was quite a mess. But um, got the water back on. Still got a little bit of, of stuff to do with some of the lines, but uh, got the water back on. But anyhow, we uh, we made it through the six degrees and eight degrees and stayed about uh, 19, I guess, throughout the weekend. And uh, now it was, I think, 66 degrees today. So, and it's supposed to be some wet weather coming in over the weekend, but I think most all the the uh, cold storms are going to be up and out of the way. But it's uh, it's been quite interesting with the with the weather here. That's for sure. But um, hope everyone is is doing well. We've got a a busy 2023 lined up. It looks like uh, we've got very very few open dates. So uh, very thankful and blessed for that. But but uh, it's going to be a, a pretty rigorous uh, schedule coming up over the next uh, few weeks and. And so it's going uh, to be quite, quite interesting. We've got, um, I guess, starting off uh, in a couple of weeks, we've got some Georgia LTAP going on. And then we're going to be, uh, uh, let's see, demos and uh, working with ACOM, the um, uh, Georgia um, aids down the on the interstates with the um champ program we'll be doing a, a couple days with them and then we're headed out to mississippi got a hands-on program out there uh in hattiesburg that's going to be the week of the 16th and uh then the next three weeks the starting the 23rd of January, we're going to be at Power South down in Andalusia, Alabama, working with the EMC down there. And uh, we've got uh, their entire uh, right away and and um, lineman crews we're going to be working with. So we'll be down there all the way through the through the tenth. And so uh, then we. Um, then we head down to Florida the week of the 13th. We're going to be working in Ocala. Um, we have a, a friend used to be uh, with Davey and uh, John Beaudry. He's got a, a demo set up for a company that he's consulting with. And then we've got Southwest Florida Water Management District, which that's, uh, they call it Swift Mud, but it's a, it's a, um, Water management, land management for the state. So we'll be down there the 15th through the 17th. And then if you're anywhere around the North Florida area, on Saturday the 18th of February, we're going to be with Amslers down in Brooksville, their annual Chainsaw Day. And that's always a great time. We had, I think, last year about 80 people or so. And so it's quite quite interesting uh mostly firewood cutters some tree guys but it's uh it's quite interesting uh, going down through that it's always a good time then we've got um on the 22nd we're heading over back over to Orlando and we have uh the Samaritan's Purse uh national meeting so we're going to be doing some training there with some of the volunteers um it's going to be held in Orlando, and that's the 23rd through the 26th. We'll be working there. We get back home, and we're repacking, getting things together, and and we're heading out to California. We'll be um, out there the the week of the sixth, working with 
um, San Luis Obispo, not, um, excuse me, Santa Clara County, which it's going to be up in uh, uh, Mount Madonna outside of Gilroy, California. Be there through the through the seventeenth, actually, and then uh, we'll be uh, headed up to. Uh, let's see, where's that one going to be? That's I think San Luis Obispo be the twentieth uh, through the twenty second. I think, and then we've got uh, the twenty third. Will be working at the uh, National Girl Scouts camp, um, and that's in uh, Julian, California, working with the maintenance crew there. They have a lot of tree work that they do. And then we're going to be heading back home. And uh, April 4th week, we will be in South Carolina. So it's just on and on. We're... we're uh, We'll be putting on a lot of miles in 2023. Not a lot of uh, extra days to work with. And that brings me to our, our next topic. If you know of anyone or uh, you have a group that's interested, we have made available uh, a video, a virtual video program now, which basically is our day one training workshop. And we're going to be um, uh, putting it as we've added some to it, but it, it's it's basically about two and a half hours of the classroom lectures going down through personal protective gear, reactive forces, the reduced downtime maintenance program, um, re, uh, looking at um, sharpening in depth, and then uh, also planning processes on standing trees as well as horizontal storm trees. That's about two and a half hour portion. And then I've added uh, some video, which will be, uh, we're calling it in wood, in wood video. And that's going to be uh, added to the, the virtual program. And so it's just a, a way to go down through the techniques, me showing on video and some other uh, excerpts from different classes that we have done this past year. And I think it's going to be a good introduction for a lot of people. It's three and a half hours, uh, basically, and it can be uh, stopped and started. There's time for breaks and and all this and more or less... Uh, uh, it's it's broken into different segments. There's there's actually chapter markers that you can you can work with, but it's going to be available. Uh, download from our uh, our Google Drive, and so uh, you'll be able to look at it on your anywhere from your phone to a projector system, and so it's uh, through computer. So it's it's quite uh, quite extensive. We've also got a a checkup called a little quiz after the end of it. it's about 20 question quiz that's uh, available to take and uh, there's also an answer key video too going down through it and so uh, we'll issue a certificate of completion and so that also would set you up to where you could uh, uh, be able to attend day two day three programs uh, that we have uh, across the country so it's a pretty pretty uh good program to to get going you do it at your own speed and it's uh it's set up i've just uh put out a video on it uh laura and i explaining the details of how it works uh it, it's basically for the, the three and a half hour virtual program is uh 250 dollars and then we have uh some discounts for groups of five, uh, down to 200, and then uh, 175 for uh, each seat on 10 or more. So that's explained in the in the video just posted. You can look at it. So recap 2022 and a virtual uh, workshop. So that's uh, I uploaded that uh, uh, yesterday, I think. So please take a look at that. That's. Uh, it's a lot going on, and maybe that'll give uh, some people a chance to to get involved in some of the program. And um, it's basically 
uh, my complete uh, classroom on day one that we do live. And I videoed all of it uh, in, uh, in a pretty, pretty professional looking uh, process. So hopefully it, it, it works out for a lot of people. We've used it up in uh, New England. Um, so it's, it's worked out very well. We've, we've been doing uh, the day one uh, virtually. And then with smaller groups, usually about eight people or so, uh, doing the hands-on sessions for felling and storm cleanup. So it's it's worked out very, very well up in New England. Hopefully uh, people will find it very useful across the country. So we see how that goes. But that's, uh, that's a lot of our, our uh, things that are, that are happening. I am, uh, I'm working on a Soren Erickson trail. And I have been uh, scouring YouTube and, and looking at, at different videos that are out there, looking for uh, people that have uh, been influenced by the open face technique, bore cutting, um, uh, certain PPE items, those kinds of things that, that Soren Erickson kind of introduced into the States. And uh, I, I'll be putting together a whole history uh, of that and uh, what he has done for chainsawing in North America. And a lot of people, uh, uh, I made this statement, a lot of people uh, have uh, gotten, you know, pretty efficient and effective at, at different, uh, different cutting techniques, and uh, they don't really know where they came from in a lot of cases. So uh, Soren kind of kind of really started the... Uh, I guess you'd say the Scandinavian felling techniques and delimbing techniques uh, in the United States and North America. So uh, it's been uh, uh, a pleasure being part of that system over the years and, and just going down through a, a lot of folks. Uh, I, was, I was just kind of scouring the brain. There, there's, there's hundreds of them, but uh, kind of scouring the brain to go up and look at some of the, the ones who, who really started with Soren. So, it's uh, it's going to be a good uh, process of, of putting it together. I think it'll be uh, something. Soren, Soren passed away in 2017, and that's five years. So I wanted to uh, kind of keep his, his name and efforts out there. And so uh, I'm working on this little video documentary, and uh, I'm going to have a some testimonials on there, as well as kind of shuttling through some some different people's uh, uh, YouTube channels that are influenced by by Soren's efforts. So uh, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty cool. So looking forward to that. Well, any questions out there tonight, or different things you're working on? We've got uh, a lot. Uh, of questions coming in and out over the past few weeks. I've, I've tried to put uh, some, some video together um, kind of explaining uh, some of the answers, but uh, not, a, not a whole lot uh, have I heard since the holidays. Hopefully all are doing well. Looks like the weather is the, the main issue out there right now. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, uh, the storms, the cold storms that, that went across the central and really down even into the south and all the snow and ice and stuff that, that went up around, especially Buffalo, New York. I was talking to one guy this morning that, that said that the uh, first time they'd ever heard of Niagara Falls kind of freezing up. So evidently it had a, I haven't seen any pictures of it, but I, I need to look that up. But uh, there was uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, comments that Niagara Falls was even uh, kind of frosted over. So that's a lot of water to, to freeze going down. So anyway, that's kind of it. But, uh, hope everyone is, is is doing great. I've got uh, I've got some new new uh, camera equipment and and things are working. I kind of kind of putting together some some uh, more or less kind of cinematic videos that we're we're looking to do some. Kind of little, I guess you'd say, uh, documentaries on some different things. I'm going to be working a little bit closer with uh, putting more people in the process this year. 
uh, doing some interviews and uh, everything from the for the YouTube channel as well as uh, our podcast series and and it's really going well. It's it's growing faster than the the YouTube. Uh, but uh, I, I I did want to say too. I, I appreciate everyone. We we passed two thousand subscribers this past week, and so very appreciative to everyone who's uh, who has clocked in. And and uh, please make sure looking over the the uh, different uh, uploads that I've done to press the likes and to take and and. Make sure that you tell your friends and neighbors to, to go on there and subscribe. We want to get the chainsaw safety and production techniques out there as as many as possible. So the more people, the the merrier. It's not a whole lot of of uh, financial to it all, but it is something that helps a little bit in keeping the equipment up and going. So looking forward to to growing this thing over time. But it's uh, also kind of interesting to to uh, to see the the people that are involved and watching pretty regularly. So uh, I hear hear quite often from from some of those that have been involved since the the first ones that I started posting. So appreciate everyone on that. Hopefully the stream is coming through good tonight and got uh, some good sound and stuff. Hopefully. Looks like everything is working along pretty good. I do still have the um, the chat line up. If you do have questions and, and things, you can uh, call 706-901-SAW-7297. And you can leave a message on there of different questions that you might have or, or different ideas that you have on videos that you'd like me to put together. And I'll try to find somebody to answer the questions and uh, come up with some different things. We had um, some recently on struck buys and those kinds of things. Uh, David Breeden with Husfarna has had helped me out with some of that, and we've got uh, quite a lot going on and some different. Uh, um, I guess you'd say uh, things of helmets and those kinds of things have come off some of those struck by videos. Uh, from questions and things on it, so it's uh, it's pretty good to to hear success stories out there. Uh, people have have been able to maintain, um, you know, the safety with personal protective equipment and some different techniques. Um, last week, I uh, oh, we were home, but then the f week before, we were down uh, working with a, a group of supervisors for. Georgia DOT down in Townsend, Georgia, and had a couple uh, unique situations working on some storm piles and things, and and so I posted a video of that uh, a week or so ago. So please check that one out. And I had a the question about you know what to do with a a lot of uh, piles of storm debris, and we go through that with the planning process just like a. Um, single tree that's horizontal that's that's looking for any hazards that are overhead and around then checking to see can it go left or right up or down back and forward and what i have tried to put together a lot with the, the training classes and it's kind of kind of neat to do i take some spray paint and once we have fallen trees and kind of crisscross everything i take some spray paint and mark uh, dots in different areas of where it's crossing over logs and different things across ravines. And and then we, we plan those particular dots. And I'm not saying you've got to do that to, to be able to understand it, but uh, you know, most most of the time we, we just just start cutting. And uh, if you if you really start planning those five steps it it comes out with a lot less stuck saws and a lot less things happening quickly. I found that no matter where you where you choose to cut, uh, you've got to have that plan. So I always I kind of take the guess out of where they're going to cut. I, I put that mark there so that they have to cut at that particular position, 
And so that means you back up, you take a look at ups and downs, side to side, back and forward pressures, and then pick uh, how you're going to control that, whether you're using a notch and a hinge, just like in felling, to, to lower weight, or we use an offset cut of some type, a uh, tongue and groove if there's potential for twist with the offset, uh, straight cuts, wedge cuts. Uh, so all of those, those types of things help to... Uh, manage the weight and the maneuvering and move, moving of those particular uh, horizontal situations. And some things that, that people have, have shared with me over the years, one of them uh, that has worked out very well was, was uh, one, one group shared with me the three rules that they, they used. The first one is, uh, is one person on the tree with a chainsaw until it's stabilized. That means uh, you're getting the, the vertical limbs down if they're pretty large limbs, so nobody is going to be within the drop zone of that limb. And uh, so you want to separate sometimes work areas. Go ahead and, and buck some of the the, uh, the log so that uh, you can separate the top from the trunk. If you've got more than one person going to be working the site. Second thing is try to work from the butt end of the tree. Um, so first of all, removing a, a root ball, and I just posted a, a short and another video. My son had a had a big white oak tree went across his trail, and so we went down and removed that. And uh, the root ball wasn't too bad on that one because it was kind of only holding on one corner, but it did it did rise and twist. So um, root balls are something you want to try to get disconnected as soon as possible. And then work from that butt end up to the top. That doesn't always mean that you're going to start right at the root ball. You want to disconnect that, but um, you know you may go to where the first limbs start, cross a road or whatever, and start working. But always work from the the tail to the top, and that gives you the opportunity to remove weight, and also to be able to stay clear of a lot of pressures and binds. So that's that's something to uh, to think through there. And then the, the third thing is, is don't pass any limbs because you you pass a limb that's usually going to cause side pressures or or different pinches that that uh, easily sticks the saw. So important to uh, to think through those three things and putting your plans together. So that's uh, some things to to think through, and there's a like I say a good video there in Townsend, and then also the uh, pressures and binds. I did some some wedge and repeat. Uh, with uh, that white oak tree, so you can take a look at those if you hadn't already. And please leave any comments and uh, press that like button, and we'll go from there. I just wanted to kind of give a little update, see if everybody's doing well, and hopefully things are going good out there. If you have any questions, let us know. You can send it to info at forestapps.com, or, or you can uh, leave a, a message on any one of the, the videos. and. And we'll try to follow up with you on it. But I appreciate everyone dropping in tonight. This will be hard copy also over on the site. And so uh, any questions that you have, let me know. But I don't see any questions tonight here on the chat. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of check out of here. And we'll be talking to you later, I guess. So this is Tim Hard along the Forest Daps Road wishing you good sawing. See you all.